I was almost financially excluded and kicked out of the MBCHB program earlier this year. So in today's video, I really want to talk about how I've been managing to pay my school fees as a postgraduate student and how fasting really saved me from getting kicked out of the program this year. God really has a reputation of showing up last minute and suddenly in my life. So stay tuned if you want to know how I've managed to pay my fees, the three funding options that I have looked into, and what is currently helping me right now. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dawn. And on this channel, we call each other mighty conquerors because there is nothing we cannot do through Christ Jesus, who is our strength. If this is your first time tuning in, a very special and a warm welcome to you. I pray that on this channel, you will find encouragement, strength, and positivity in your journey with Christ together with me. So guys, as I was saying earlier on, I almost got financially excluded at the beginning of this year because I had a historical debt of my second year school fees. I'm in my third year right now, right? So what had essentially happened is that as someone who is over the age of 30 and who has matriculated more than 10 years ago, there's a lot of bursaries, guys, that I do not qualify for simply because of my age or how long ago I have matriculated, right? So there are quite a lot of bursaries that um, fund postgraduate students or students who have degrees already if they fit within these criteria that some of the bursaries have. And some of these bursaries that I know of, that students who are in my class are currently using, who have degrees, is the GCRA um, bursary, and PPS and ISFAB. ISFAB is like a NASFIS for the missing middle, right? I don't qualify for any of those. And I'm sure there's quite a lot more. So if you know of any, please do share them in the comment section below. So in my case, um, thankfully, when I came to varsity in my first year, I was working um, for six months prior to that. So I had managed to save up enough money to pay the 15,000 Rand registration fees that was required. And um, even before that, I had some money that I had inherited from my late mother from her pension fund, which was up to like 50,000 Rand that I had left off um, or remaining with me by the time I started medical school. So, um, you know, after registration, you don't necessarily have to pay your school fees um, immediately. You can wait till the end of the year, um, just in case you get a bursary that can help you out. So that's exactly what I did in my first year. And by the grace of God, Stellenbosch University has something called Itemba bursary, which is an internal bursary that is only offered to students who are currently studying. So I applied for that in my first year and it paid out 50% of my fees, which was around 40,000 Rand. So I was now left with the other 40,000 Rand plus that I needed to pay um, at the end of first year, um, which I didn't. <laughs> um, at the time of the start of my second year, the university's online system um, was the old one. So you could still um, ask for permission from your department, which for me is the MBCHB office, to get registered. Not really registered, but to have access to the learning material and all the online platforms of the university in my program um, while I am still waiting to get registered, right? So I was really nervous about that. So I emailed the MBCHB head as well as the deputy registrar of the Faculty of Health and Science in my department. You know, I had to pray to God <laughs> to essentially help me to put the right words in my mouth 
as I was writing that email to explain my situation to them that, you know what, I am a first year postgrad and this is my situation. I really don't have this 40K plus to pay off so that I can register for my second year. Can I at least in the interim be given access to the learning platforms and all the content that I need um, while I figure out how I'm going to pay off this historical debt, right? So um, to my surprise, the deputy registrar responded like within seconds of sending that email and she didn't respond directly to me. It was directed to the person responsible for registering or giving students access to the online platform and he told that person to just assist me with my request and just like that um, I had access to the materials and with the old learning system right or university system for once they give you access to the learning material you are able to go and self-register yourself online um, even though you have a historical date so that's what essentially saved me um, in my second year from paying off um, my first year historical debt before I registered, right? So I didn't have to pay it anymore. It just carried over into the second year. So again, in the second year, I applied again for Itemba and I got it again. It paid 50% of whatever was in my student account well, not really what it was in my student account, but of the second year fees, which was this time a little bit more than the first year. So it was around 50,000 Rand. So after they had paid off the 50,000 Rand, I think I was left with like 70 um, school fees, including the historical date from last year, if not 80 or so. So um, at the beginning of that year also, while I was still trying to find a way to get myself registered. Um, the SRC of the university had applications out for students who needed um, funding with their historical date. So I applied for that and around May, um, I got that um, financial aid as well and they paid about 20,000 Rand towards my um, historical date. So by the end of second year, I was left with like 46,000 Rand to pay off um, before I could register this year for my third years. Um, so now this year the online registration system had changed because this university had adopted a new um, system altogether. So now you couldn't just, you know, um, self-register without paying your hysterical date at all, right? Um, so again, I went to the head of my department, asked for access to the learning materials for this year while I figure out how I'm gonna pay off this <laughs> 46,000 Rand. Oh, you know, oh, it was just like such a very stressful time for me. Um, so they give me access and then um, January, goes by February goes by and now we're in the month of March um, the last month to register <laughs> um, or I just have to you know delay or defer my studies until the following year so now um, this came as a shock to me because this is something I didn't expect you know I didn't think that you know my university um, can actually financially exclude you um, just because you can't pay your fees, which is understandable. I mean, the university is is a business, you know, I, I always say this, you know, um, and for me personally, I'm not somebody who has a sense of entitlement, you know, that someone should pay my fees, you know, not at my age, at least, you know. Um, I believe that, you know, as an adult, um, even if my parents were working, um, it's, out of the goodness of their heart that after I have moved out of their house that they should assist me with anything you know so I'm really not an entitled person so um, I just took a chance again and this time I emailed the registrar of not the registrar the dean of my faculty um, to try and like you know get myself registered without 
paying the historical debt and she was unfortunately unable to help me like she's the one who like explicitly straight to the point like cutthroat as it was to tell me in that email that you need to pay your historical debt of 46,000 whatever by the end of March which was in two weeks time at the time or speak to this lady she actually put her name and her email um, and arrange for you to be deferred or for you to defer your studies um, until next year when you have paid your fees then you can come back and do your third year next year <sighs> guys you're 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 <laughs> Yeah, that was like, yo, yeah, that was, that was, that was like, yo, yeah, so, so, so like, yo, yeah, I don't know. I just went, I just shut down. I just went crazy. I just, you know, yo, yeah, I, yeah, this was my reaction. I was just found so helpless um, because I was like, really, what is going to happen now? <laughs> you know, um, so me as someone who is you know a child of faith and a child of god you know um and if you followed my channel for the last i don't know three years you will know that on this channel i always advocate for fasting right especially in times where you are helpless you know it god always comes through for me when i fast you know he doesn't always necessarily um give me the breakthrough or the miracle that i'm asking for sometimes he just opens a door of wisdom um, to show me you know what I need to do uh, or who I need to speak to what to say exactly what to do specifically to get myself out of this situation right so um, that's where the power of doing a one-day fast you know um, showed itself to me you know I fasted for like one day um, and just asking God for wisdom, you know, just asking God to help me not to defer my studies because Lord, you know, you are the one who opened this door for me. You put me in here. I don't know what option I need to go for. Um, you know, in my heart right now that, you know, as much as there is the, that option of a student loan and I do have it right now, but I don't want to go that route, you know, because you know, God, how debt you know in my family has been a very bad experience you know i, I have a really bad trauma you know um, of debt you know i've seen what it has done to my parents and other family members and i just don't want the same for me but i'm not saying that you know um st student loans are bad you know um I've come to realize over the, the the course of this year actually that not all debt is bad you know there are debts which are good like a student loan because you are essentially um, investing in your future you know the same way someone would um, use a bond to invest in buying a house for their family that's an investment you know it's a good debt so I've come to realize that now you know but at the time I was just very very like adamant not to um, go for this option although it's not a bad debt to have now I know now it is something that I would actually consider going for it you know but I essentially found myself you know giving in to the temptation of going to do what is against what is in my heart and I went to the bank <laughs> to inquire about um, student loans and so forth and oh i got the shock of my life and i think it was just you know god's intention you know to make that not work out because on the day that i went to the bank first of all i stay um a walking distance from the bank that i bank with right um at the time so i took my ids and you know my my husband's id because it was going to be him who was going to be collateral for the bank because you can't take a bank loan if there's no one to um, pay it for you um, once they give you the money so on the way to the bank um, halfway through there um, I realized that the IDs are missing you know 
<laughs> so you can't go and get a bank loan without an ID. Like, I just like, you know, like filter through the documents that I had because I had a file. I didn't carry everything in a bag. I just carried the, a flip file, right, with the documents in. And every document was in there except for both of our IDs. So we now had to walk back and um, track our steps like we are walking looking for the id hoping that you know it's still on the floor somewhere and we walked back and forth back and forth i think maybe like seven times um and the ids were nowhere to be found like i we had literally just lost our id how i did not hear them fall how he did not hear them fall because we were walking together to the bank only god knows so we essentially decided that okay we will still go anyway even though there's nothing we can do just to find out what options we have there so we get to the bank and they tell us that well um a student loan actually only pays for the year that you are currently in right um so if you want to use a bank loan to pay for a historical debt of your school fees then it becomes a personal loan not a student loan which is bad because with a personal loan the interest rate is three times as much and you have to pay or start paying back that personal loan immediately um, whereas with a student loan with um, my bank, I don't know if it's the same with other banks, I bank with EPSA, um, you are able to only just pay the interest accumulated on that loan in immediately. So for instance, if I take out a loan of 100K and the interest is 10,000, I'm, I'm obligated to only pay the 10,000 rand in the first year of taking out the loan. And then the 100K, I can start paying it off from the following year and I can pay it off over two years or for three years you know the option is mine right um, so now we were like we, we just cannot afford you know to take a personal loan because I mean we don't have the money to start paying off that kind of debt right now you know but if we were able to get the student loan then at least it would buy us time um, which is the rest of this year to figure out how are we going to start to pay it back next year when it's time to pay pay it back the interest um, rate that we have to pay immediately that's more money you know we can literally pay it off like in like three months or so okay so <sighs> that didn't work out so now um, by the grace of God what happened like a week now before um, registration closed um, one of my investments um, came through like all of a sudden you know um, so remember I did say at the beginning of this video that um, I did have some inheritance money from my mom's pension fund that I had received and I had invested it um, into property right and so um, that property somehow managed to get sold you know just in time for them to give me back um, my share of the investment and then that is how I was now able to pay off that um, 46,000 rand debt you know it was from you know um, that money that I had inherited from my mom so now going into um, fourth year being in third year now and still have not have haven't had paid <laughs> still haven't have paid a single cent of my third year fees um, the plan so far um, is to continue to apply for bursaries I have already started applying um, um, that's option number one and actually I came across this um, WhatsApp channel called graduate 24 um, like two days ago actually it's very 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 helpful I wish there was something like that um, at the start of <laughs> this degree you know I don't know why it's only now that I'm discovering it but I'll leave the link um, to that website in the description box below 
but it's like a WhatsApp channel where they advertise all the job opportunities and funding options that um, you can go for as a student from any field it's not just medicine it's like all kinds of industries you know and it's legit guys like graduate 24 is legit yo yeah but um yeah besides that um, <coughs> um like i said now that i know better in terms of student loans um i am willing to go that route um which means that um, it's October now, so I have ooh, about a month to decide on like taking out the student loan because if um, November ends and I have not gone back to the bank to um, get the student loan, it will unfortunately now be considered a historical debt again and I won't qualify for the loan anymore for this year's debt. Um, so it will now become a personal loan like i explained which you no know, that i can't afford so um that's the option i have um also second option i have also and um the third option that i have right now is um working so um if you don't know i'm a content creator not just here on youtube i'm also on instagram and tiktok i do um work with brands on certain campaigns um and make content around that uh, mostly my content is based on um, being a mom and juggling medical school, you know, being productive, homemaking, you know, just encouraging people to just see that they can thrive, you know, um, no matter what um, roles and responsibilities that they have, you know, you can still be able to go out there and do all these things and wear all these different hats and still win you know in all these areas you know because i'm doing it so you can also do it so with my content creation which i started doing seriously in the month of february this year so now it's eight months exactly um from the campaigns that i've received most of them because i'm a small content creator they are trade exchanges so they're not paid partnerships so the brand will just give me the product in exchange for the content you know um, so in terms of the paid partnerships um, in these eight months so far I've only made around 6,000 Rand you know and I'm owing the university like 92,000 Rand but um, you know like I said God really has a reputation of showing up last minute and suddenly you know I mean he says in Isaiah 48 verses 3 I foretold the former things long time ago. My mouth announced them. I made them known. And then suddenly I acted and they came to pass. So this verse just confirms the fact that God does really have a reputation of showing up last minute and suddenly just to test your faith until the end. So I am keeping all these avenues and opportunities open you know which is bursary applications student loan um, my job as a content creator because I don't know you know which one will God use to bless me financially so that I can pay off my third year school fees um, but one thing I know for sure in the last minute he's definitely going to do something big something mysterious that I myself even now I cannot begin to imagine you know so yeah guys please do let me know um what options are there that you guys know of um for funding especially for someone like me who is in um medical school as a postgraduate student who's got three degrees you know and one thing i forgot to mention is municipal bursaries the lord is just revealing this to me now um, you know, I know my municipality from my hometown, um, they don't like advertise the bursaries, you know, so I think if you're in my situation, do go to your municipal um, offices from your hometown, 
hometown and tell them about your historical date tell them about your school fees you know because i remember when my cousin was doing nursing and she was in her final year she couldn't graduate because of her historical date and then her mom went to the mayor in our municipality and pleaded with him and somehow that guy was able to pull strings because you know they have connections in all these places and managed to get a bursary for her to pay off that debt and that's something I think I need to do because God is just revealing it to me right now. Yeah. So, yeah, let me know, guys, what other options are there um, um, to pay historical debts, to pay current school fees as a postgraduate student. I would really appreciate that information. But one thing I know for sure is that next year, March, will find me in fourth year and registered you know and I'll be here to come back and to tell you all about it because God is going to show up he's going to act and he's gonna do it suddenly and it's going to be great and I wish the same for you too if you are in the same boat that I am I'm praying for you pray for me too and God bless you I'll see you in my next video hey mighty conquerors have you given your life to Christ yet he said, in this world, ye shall have many troubles, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So why don't you give your life to Christ today to taste and see that the Lord is good. His promises are yes and amen. So I invite you at this very moment to take this short prayer of salvation with me and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and with my heart I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son and that he died on the cross of Calvary that I too may be forgiven and have eternal life. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and I ask you right now to come into my life and to be my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of God. May God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. God bless you and 